For a man's labor also is a commodity exchangeable for benefit as well as any other thing. Thomas Hobbes, Leviathan. Hello again and welcome back. At the beginning of chapter seven, the housekeeper begs Bachelor Carrasco to prevent her master from going on another adventure. After a brief comical dialogue, Sanson tells her not to worry that he will think of something. You know that I am a bachelor from Salamanca, so all that's needed is for me to produce some bachelor babble. The misunderstandings in their conversation, as well as the constant emphasis on Sanson's academic status, provide context for yet another set of confusions that take place between Sancho and Don Quixote. Note also how, as he just did with his looks inside the respective households of Sancho and Don Quixote, Cervantes narrates different events that are occurring simultaneously. He links these events via one of his favorite rhetorical figures, the Theugma, which deploys a term in one sentence but leaves that term implicit in another. Here, time is the linking term. The bachelor went straight away to find the priest in order to communicate to him what will be related in due time. And during theirs alone, Don Quixote and Sancho had a conversation which the history recounts truthfully and in great detail. This beautiful device serves many purposes. For one, it reveals the complex nature of Cervantes' narrative universe and of reality in general. Can you think of others? Did you know? A seugma is a rhetorical figure which functions by alighting a word while simultaneously granting it a secondary meaning. The most famous example in Spanish literature comes from part one of Don Quixote, when Dorotea describes, in a literal manner, the exit of her servant, and then in a figurative manner, the loss of her own virginity. And with the departure from the room of my maiden, I cease to be one. Let's look at the conversation between Sancho and Don Quixote. Sancho reports that he has convinced his wife to let him go on another adventure, but his word choice is wrong. I've convinced my wife to let me go with your grace. Don Quixote corrects him. Convinced, you mean to say. The irony here is that Don Quixote's reducida means convinced, but Sancho's relucida, which means shined, could also mean severely whipped, which would certainly be a more severe kind of convincing. The act of whipping an animal or a person will be a major theme throughout part two. Sancho responds that his master should not correct him so abruptly. If Don Quixote would just wait a bit, then Sancho would be more open to criticism. But again, his word choice is confusing. For I'm so focile, this could be a mispronunciation of fothil, meaning touchy or defensive, or maybe Sancho meant to say fácil, meaning easy to convince. Note that this cuts straight to the nature of the relationship between master and servant. Sancho is either too sensitive or easily dominated. Don Quixote prefers the more obedient option. You mean to say that you are so docile, pliant, and faint-hearted. When Sancho reports that he has convinced his wife to let him go on another adventure, he inadvertently alludes to which famous Spanish institution? A, the Inquisition, B, the Castilian Parliament, C, the Order of Santiago. Correct answer, A, the Inquisition. This confusion is the perfect context for the true topic that Sancho wants to discuss, compensation for his services. Ironically, given that he claims to have controlled his wife, Sancho now says that Teresa has forced him to get serious with Don Quixote, adding that any man who does not listen to a woman's advice is insane. Also ironic, given that Don Quixote has recently called the women of his household stupid girls, our knight wholeheartedly agrees with Sancho's deference to women here. Sancho gets up the nerve to ask for a salary, that your grace should specify for me a fixed salary that you'll give me for every month that I serve you and that this salary should be paid to me from your estate for I don't want to depend on anybody's promised favors. This is huge. Cervantes' novel is very modern on this point. Sancho rejects feudalism, which depends on his master's generosity. He wants a contract. His logic is also interesting. His reasoning is grounded in the fact of death. Because we are mortal beings, our time has value. No one is guaranteed in this world any more hours of life than those that God decides to grant him. 
That's all for now. We invite you to watch our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.